Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. Um, the old timers would always say uh, where the birch grows, the soil is thin. So they would use the uh, birch trees as a uh, indicator on how well the soil was if they were gonna work some uh, piece of land up uh, for their farm. Um, the birch always grows in thin, sandy soil from uh, my experience in uh, this part of Michigan where we are here. Uh, but the birch is also a highly medicinal tree. There's a bunch of different medicines that can be made from the birch tree. And I'm going to uh, take you guys back to uh, my place and uh, show you how to make one of these uh, birch medicines. And uh, I'm gonna find a, a downed tree here because I don't want to take any uh, anything from a live tree. So I'm gonna find a uh, birch tree around here and uh, we're going to take some uh, bark off that birch tree to take back and make some medicine. All right, guys, we're uh, back here at my place now. I got my birch bark here. I'm starting to process this stuff up. And uh, what I'm making is uh, is going to be a birch bark salve. So when I make that, I have to draw um, the essential properties of this birch bark out um, so I can make my uh, salve. Um, birch bark um, was a highly uh, medicinal uh, plant back in the day, still is. Um, but a lot of knowledge has been forgotten on uh, this stuff. Um, I wanted to make this video as simple as possible so folks that um, don't live out in the country, even that live in uh, the city, have the ability and the knowledge to uh, know how to make this stuff because birch trees are planted for ornamentals and stuff. So there are birch trees in a bunch of different places. Um, I've seen birch trees you know in uh, in cities and whatnot and if uh, you know a neighbor or somebody that you know is cutting down a birch tree or you see some you know tree trimmers in town um, cutting up uh, birch limbs or whatever you can grab some of this uh, birch bark and then you can use that for a, a wild medicinal um, uh, the thing that I remember I guess uh, birch bark salve being used for is um, creaky joints and uh, the creaky joints and uh, rheumatism arthritis that's what I really remember this um, this uh, salve being made for and of course native uh, Native Americans uh, they would use bear grease and I've seen some really effective um, native ointments that were that are highly guarded secrets that are uh, that were made with bear grease and uh, of course, we don't have, uh, most people don't have uh, access to bear grease, including myself. Um, so they use different kinds of oils to uh, draw these uh, compounds out, olive oil. I like using sunflower oil because sunflower oil is very high in uh, vitamin E. So uh, sunflower oil is good for uh, making these uh, these birch bark um, and different uh, types of herbal salves and whatnot. And this is a tincture here that I made with birch bark about a year ago. and. Uh, Tinctures are good for a lot of stuff, um, but I find that tinctures are more difficult to make with salves, that oils work better, because they don't incorporate as well. You still can incorporate these tinctures into salves, but it's it's more difficult. I want this to be simple for folks to understand. Um, so 
gonna need a little oil here and uh, of course you're gonna need some beeswax uh, beeswax kind of solidifies the salve when you're making it so it uh, got to have some beeswax uh, uh, a package of beeswax like this lasts a long time because sometimes you don't need a lot of uh, um, beeswax when you're making uh, salves and ointments the more beeswax you put in of course the more uh, firmer the uh, ointment is you're going to need a uh, pan and you're going to need a jar like this right here and uh, this is a mason jar because what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, birch bark and we're going to put it in this jar we're going to fill it up with oil and uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to put it in this pot just like that and we're going to fill that up with water and we're going to turn that on very very low heat so that can uh, basically draw out the um the oils and all the beneficial properties of the birch bark out into that oil and then we're going to use that oil to make our uh, salve with um, you're going to let this go quite a while um, I'm going to let this go all day maybe even part of the day tomorrow I'm just going to turn on real low check it from time to time so it can draw all that uh, that good stuff out of the bark here now to process this bark all I do is, is you're going to take a strip of uh, the bark like this right here um, I've seen different ways that people process this bark I've seen people grate it chop it up real fine um, I've seen you know big old box graters but that's kind of a knuckle buster so I don't want to uh, do that um, but basically all I do is I take the really good uh, sections of bark and I'm going to cut strip off like so and then I'm going to cut into smaller pieces basically like that the more surface area the more uh, the more the good stuff is going to be drawn out of this uh, birch bark so I'm gonna process the rest of this here I'm gonna get it into uh, my jars of course if there's any scrap or anything left over it's birch bark it's a very good fire uh, starting material so save all that add that back into either your fire kit or uh, on your kindling pile whatever so nothing uh, goes to waste and you use all of this stuff but anyway I'm gonna get the rest of this processed up here I'm gonna get it in the uh, jar I'm gonna get uh, this covered with uh, my sunflower oil and then we're gonna start uh, heating this up uh, to draw out the uh, good stuff out of this uh, birch bark so we can make our birch bark salve all right I got my uh, birch bark in my mason jar here you can see about how much I got in here now I'm gonna fill that up with oil up to about here and uh, then it's going to go into uh, the pot and then I'm gonna put water around it so it can uh, be heated and it can steep out the, the good stuff out of the uh, birch bark into the oil so I'm gonna place that in uh, my pot there and now I'm gonna just uh, pour my sunflower oil into it until it's just about covered a little more now I'm gonna get my uh, lid on here and I'm gonna get some water on uh, this and I'm gonna start to uh, heat this up on a really really low heat and then we're just gonna let it go uh, and uh, do its thing All right, guys, it is the uh, next morning. You can see there I got my uh, birch bark and oil uh, simmering. That's been simmering all night long on a low. The oil is uh, darkened up a little bit, and it's uh, starting to take the aroma of the bark. So it's uh, good to go now to uh, mix our salve. I got my old uh, salve uh, container right there. I'm going to uh, refill it because I mix this in small batches, and then I put that into my large holding container. I also got a small tin back there that I'm going to use. Um, just for one that's, uh, I guess, portable to take along with me. And I got a, a small amount of uh, beeswax there in that half pint jar. And uh, we're going to start uh, melting that. I'm going to turn the camera around here. I'm going to show you exactly how I'm uh, doing this. All right, guys. I uh, rearranged my stove here so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. I got my uh, one... Uh, pot going there about half full of water that's going to be my double boiler to melt my uh, wax in and uh, there's my uh, birch oil on the back there this is my holding container i actually put that in the uh, hot water to uh, melt that a little bit and loosen that up because we're going to add what i'm making back into that uh, container i also got a small tin there that i'm going to use uh, today as well this is my pelleted beeswax i've got about a third of a cup um, in here now 
One thing about this pelleted beeswax is, is there's a lot of airspace in it. So a third of a cup isn't necessarily a third of a cup. And as a general rule for these salves, it's about uh, one part beeswax to uh, three parts oil um, when you're making it. And then you can adjust it with a little bit more oil, uh, depending on how uh, loose you want your uh, salve to be. So uh, I'm going to actually set this in here now and uh, let the... Uh, let the beeswax uh, start to melt. Um, this, uh, I guess, technique here with uh, with the oil and uh, and the beeswax. This can be used for different salves as well. It can be used for uh, like a like a herbal salve if you have a broadleaf uh, plantain or plantain in your area. You could uh, do the same thing with that. Another thing this time of year, being spring, is dandelions. You can make a really uh, good dandelion salve, which is actually really good for like cracked hands and stuff. Um, you just make it the same way. Uh, you put the dandelions in the oil and you turn the heat on low. Uh, you can also just set the uh, dandelion uh, oil mixture in the window for a few weeks, but if you want it quicker, you can do this kind of overnight method that I did here. Um, but anyway, when this... Uh, beeswax gets melted i'm going to come back and uh, we're going to add the oil into it uh, for our salve and here is what the uh, beeswax looks like as it's melting i'm going to wait till this is completely melted and then i'm going to turn the heat off of this and uh, then i'm going to add my uh, oil into it i've got my uh, oil right here got a couple of chunks in it but that's okay i don't uh, I don't mind a couple of chunks in my uh, salve. Um, you can strain this uh, completely like with a coffee filter or something if you don't want that, but uh, that little bit in there really doesn't uh, bother me. It's kind of like lumpy gravy. It's still good. Anyway, I'm going to uh, get the rest of this melted here and we're going to get the oil mixed into this. All right, I have uh, thoroughly stirred and incorporated the oil into the beeswax. Now, I'm going to take this and we're going to add this into our uh, holding container. And uh, we're going to do another batch and uh, then we're going to kind of check it for consistency. If we need to add a little more oil into it, we're going to add a little bit uh, more oil into it. Like I said, the beeswax uh, is kind of mostly air when you measure it. So I did a full uh, one third of a cup of uh, oil and I did a one third of a cup of the beeswax, but that's probably uh, a little bit less than that. So uh, we're just going to kind of check it and uh, we're going to go from there to get the consistency right. All right, I got my uh, second batch stirred up. Got this uh, old tin here that I scavenged from something. And uh, now all we're going to do is we're going to pour our uh, salve into the tin. And we're going to let that set up. And uh, when it's uh, set up, I'm going to show you uh, what the consistency of it is. And uh, we'll do a little bit of a wrap-up. And here is the finished salve um, after it's uh, set up. Now, you see here on the bottom, there's a little bit of a settling on the bottom. Sometimes you'll get a settling ring on the bottom of uh, your storage container while this is still liquid. And what you want to do to uh, keep that from happening is you want to uh, just swirl the jar around a little bit as it's cooling because that uh, settling ring on the bottom that's actually your uh, medicine so you want that incorporated into your salve and if you uh, pick that up a couple of times and swirl that around as you're uh, as that's cooling and uh, setting up um, you'll uh, keep that uh, medicine in uh, suspension that we uh, work so hard to uh, make and this is uh, what the salve looks like here I'll take a little bit of it out you can see there that's uh, about the consistency of uh, of that balm that we uh, made so uh, anyway I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video here just uh, showing you uh, how to make this uh, old-time uh, balm here this old-time uh, a salve out of uh, birch bark but anyway this is modern refugee I appreciate all my subscribers out there hope you guys uh, get a little information a little entertainment on my video how to make uh, something uh, real uh, simple here that's medicinal out of a uh, commonly uh, found tree but you guys have a good one